If you're looking for low-cost Section 8 properties in the Cleveland market, we are here to help you out. But do not spend your money until you watch this episode. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. I'll be your host. Today, I'm working with my man Shazam. He is an investor from Maryland, and he is looking to spend some money on some Section 8 rental properties here in the Cleveland market. Now, as I understand it, brother, you are priced out of your current market. You would like to have your money go further, right? You want to get your money to go as far as you possibly can. So you've targeted some very low-cost properties in the Cleveland market that you think would work well for Section 8. As a matter of fact, you sent me a property that is priced at $29,900. And that is very smart, dude. That's what you got to do. Folks! If you're coming from out of state and you want to invest in Cleveland, you got to do your due diligence, right? Shazam, good job out of you doing your due diligence, right? That's what I'm here for. I am going to break this particular property down for you. I'm going to let you know my thoughts on it exactly. You would never, folks, never, at least you should never, buy a property without an inspection, right? But that looks inside the four walls. I am going to look outside the four walls to make sure... All other things notwithstanding, this investment property is going to accomplish your goals. So let's jump right into the numbers after this quick break. <laughs> Welcome back. Pulling up the property, okay? 9620 Mariah Ave, Cleveland 44104. Priced at 29900 This is a three-bed, one-bath. Now... Section 8 properties in the Cleveland market. I can see why you're interested in this. I can see why you sent this over. Very common for you to get about a thousand dollars a month in rent for a twenty nine or a thousand dollars a month in rent out of a three bedroom house. And if you could pick up said house for twenty nine thousand, dude, that's a great deal. Now, as far as repairs go. You know, it's dated, but it doesn't look, like, destroyed or anything of that nature, okay? It looks like we could probably do, like, a solid fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 cosmetic renovation and get this thing rent-ready, Section 8, ready to rock, right? Like, fifteen, twenty k, repaint everything, refinish these hardwoods, you know, patch minor holes, and you could update the kitchen and the bath, right? Let me go back to that bath kitchen. Yeah, like this, you know, crazy blue tile, it's not going to cut it, right? You could do new Home Depot, Lowe's quality cabinetry, make it look good. About 15, 20K, right? So if you're able to pick it up for 29.9, right? Spend about 20, you're all in for about 50, right? Get $1,000 a month in rent. If you're running the numbers, dude, that's obviously a huge return. But that doesn't tell the whole story, okay? That does not tell the whole story, right? Evidence of that is this right here DOM. 194. DOM stands for days on the market. Now, the Cleveland market is incredibly hot. Properties are flying off the friggin' shelves. So, you would think a $1,000 rental priced at under thirty k would be gone. But it's not gone, right? Because this particular property is incredibly, incredibly risky. It's in one of the most blighted areas of the city of Cleveland, right? If you guys are out there at home doing your research, the first thing you should probably do is pick up like some Google Earth action, check out the street. After that, you could probably come to me and I'll give you my take, right? I don't want to see you guys waste your money. Now, pulling up Google Earth here on this one, this is where you're really going to see the picture, right? This is why after 194 days on the market, nobody is making a move on this property, all right? This is an unre like unconscionable level of blight, right, for an out-of-state investor. This is the home. Right next door, vacant lot. House, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, house, vacant lot, two houses, two vacant lots, house, 
One, two, three, four, five, six vacant lots. Going the other way, vacant lot, two more vacant lots, another vacant lot, another vacant lot. Behind it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven vacant lots. Across the street, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Behind that, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. There's another three up there. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and I can't even see over there. So at least 40. We didn't even, I don't even think we counted this one. There's even more, right? Plus I didn't even add in the total, right, of all these. So, I mean, we're probably up over like, 75 to 100 vacant lots just in this little tiny three street radius okay those vacant lots it's not like they uh, just haven't developed homes there no every one of those vacant lots used to be a home uh but the neighborhood the area is so blighted it's so trashed uh that the houses got so dilapidated it made more sense for the owners to walk away from them and the city was just going to demolish them because they were a risk right it's where junkies go they live they shoot up drugs people kill people in these homes dead bodies get hit in there it, you know it's all kinds of horribleness right this is literally one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the united states of america so if you're thinking about buying a property out of state and it's this risky, right? When I, if you watch my show, when you guys go into the riskier levels of neighborhoods that there are, I tell you Section 8 is great because it eliminates the biggest risk, which is your tenants not paying rent. It's like the cheat code, right? But there comes a point where it's just too much for an out-of-state investor. This neighborhood, too freaking much, dude, because... The issue you're really going to run into, sure, Section 8 makes sense, but like, what kind of reasonable people can you get to live on a street where almost half of the lots have been torn down, right? That's one issue. The second issue is your property management. If you're out of state, you need to hire property management. Well, the big reputable companies like Holton Wise or other companies, we don't do property management, maintenance, and construction in neighborhoods like this. It's just too horrendous, okay? When I send... My staff to a street like this, right, my leasing staff, I got guys afraid they're going to get robbed while they're there. When it comes to renovating a house, like, I got my team worried that they leave their truck on the street and it's going to get broken into, right? It's just a dangerous neighborhood. So for me as a business owner, I can't reasonably staff my company in a way that I have a reasonable amount of employee turnover if I'm sending them to neighborhoods like this where the employees aren't comfortable, right, where they're scared. Now, if you guys watch our Tenants from Hell video, look at this. Look at all these friggin' empty lots, man. This is just insane. Like, if you guys watch, there's a house, a couple more, right? Like, it's just everywhere, right? There's so much blight. If you watch the Tenants from Hell show on Holden Wise TV, because we're all about bringing you guys transparency, you'll see a lot of my guys... They're armed, right? They're carrying guns. But those are not neighborhoods that are this bad. So it's not like they're prissy and they're, they're afraid of a little hard work. No, no, no. We, we deal with some rough stuff, but there comes a point where the risk just ain't worth the reward. And the risk, investing here as an out-of-state investor, my opinion, just not worth the reward. If you were an investor that was local to Cleveland and you knew about the business and you had uh, a business model predicated on this type of stuff, you could make some money because the price to rent ratios would be ridiculous. But as far as me being able to give you a projection based on how much money I think you'll you'll earn based on the rents and the anticipated costs, I can't give you one. I, I, I have no idea because you're out of state. You're dealing with a very unpredictable tenant base in a very unpredictable neighborhood. And the bigger issue is you're not going to be able to hire big reputable property management companies like mine, right? So that just leads you to only being able to hire people uh, that will work these neighborhoods. If all the big players in the game won't work these neighborhoods, the only people that are able to obtain market share and customers are the people that have not been able to compete with the good companies. Why have they not been able to compete? Are they not as good? Are they not as experienced? Are they not licensed, right? It's just a whole bunch of unknowns, right? So it would be completely unpredictable. It would be a total crapshoot. So for all those reasons, I think investing in this particular property would be a bad idea for you. I do not recommend it. 
going forward, I will identify some videos that I think make more sense or some properties that I think make more sense for you and shoot you some videos on those. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.